Welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about mission and career today. I'm Scotty G. I'm a relationship coach and a career coach. I've owned multiple successful businesses for the past 20 years. I also grew up with very little money, and, but I did grow up with a pretty strong work ethic. How do successful self-made people become successful? Most millionaires are self-made. The vast majority do not inherit their wealth. That is a trait that I have seen uh, throughout my entire life. I know a lot of successful business owners, entrepreneurs, professionals. The vast majority of them did not inherit their wealth. I am not sure where the media comes off telling people that wealthy people inherited their wealth or they didn't work for it. In my experience, that's completely false. Fidelity Investments actually is pretty famous for putting out a survey and a study of millionaires. They found that 88% of millionaires describe themselves as self-made. That's almost 90%. That's incredible. And furthermore, most millionaires are entrepreneurs. So they own their businesses. They started their businesses. 75%, that's three out of four. Uh, the bulk of the rest of the millionaires are professionals. So doctors, lawyers, or something that requires rigorous training and certification. I'm a doc myself. I've owned other businesses that aren't related to the medical field, but my main bread and butter is taking care of patients. But I own my practice along with my wife. We're both business partners. And we've been killing it for about 20 years. It's been amazing. I want you to have what we have. Throughout my life, I've noticed that the people in my circle, the people that I've, that I've met that are successful, they have certain qualities and cer certain characteristics that are pretty easily pinpointed. Really, in the, in the general public, you can... You can really pick out the folks that are successful. They usually have certain things to them. It's not necessarily what they're wearing or what they look like or their style. It's how they, it's how they interact with people. That's, that's what I've noticed the most. But in this episode, we're going to talk about the three Ps. The three Ps of success. They're essential. So the first P, passion. Passion is critical. So what does it mean to be passionate about something? If you really ask that question, it's, it's an interesting question, right? What, what do you like to do? What do you enjoy? What are you passionate about? So what does it mean to be passionate? It's loving life, loving what you do in life, and wanting to get better at it continually. That's what my channel is about. It's not just about marriage and relationships. It's about being a better human being, a successful human being, and knowing your worth and understanding that monetary value is great, makes you comfortable, but it's not everything. That's what this channel is all about. Very few successful people make it there without passion. You have to, you have to be passionate about something to, to be good at it. So... Ask yourself this question, what topic could you talk all day about? What could you spend your entire day doing and make it feel like it's 10 minutes as opposed to 10 hours? That's when you know you're passionate about something, when you really enjoy it and you look at a clock and two or three hours pass by when you thought it was 10 minutes. That's passion. Passion is the want to. I want to do something. Passion gives you that energy to get up in the morning, put your shoes on, and go get them. Go out there and slay saber-toothed tigers. Let's do it. That's passion. Now to the second P. Perseverance. Perseverance is when the going gets tough, the tough get going. You're going to get knocked down in life. That's a guarantee and you will deal with naysayers. You're going to deal with the negative Nancys, the Eeyores that are going to doubt you. It's the mediocre people that love mediocrity, and they want you to be mediocre to make themselves feel better about the choices that they've made. So what's the difference between perseverance and resilience? 
Perseverance is action oriented. Resilience is response oriented. Okay, so this is your Teflon and titanium. I've said it in my, my material before. Nothing sticks to you and nothing can break you. To persevere, you have to have an abundance mindset. That is critical. Look for the positive in any situation. You're always looking for the silver lining in any situation. Even if it's a bad deal, something happened. For instance, about, about a year ago, we actually had a patient uh, hit their gas pedal while they were pulling into our parking lot, ended up putting a huge hole in the side of the wall. That put a damper on our day that day, uh, and nobody got hurt, thank goodness, but it did shut down our office. Did I freak out? No, we just had to deal with it. Insurance ended up paying for it. Took a little bit of time to get it fixed, but it's all good. Uh, we ended up getting a couple new new pieces of furniture out of it. So there's the silver lining. So look for the positive in any situation. Even if things seem like they're super tough in the moment where you can't possibly think that you could go on, there is a shiny lining to be found. You just have to be able to, to see it and believe it. And that's perseverance. Number three, persistence. Now, I know what you're thinking. Persistence and perseverance seem like the same thing, right? They're not. Perseverance is when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Persistence is you keep going no matter what. This is your delayed gratification. This is where you, you're able to put something off as opposed to instant gratification. So there's two different people in, in the world. If you want to classify people, there's people that, that can handle delayed gratification and people that are all about the instant gratification. Instant gratification people will not be successful. It just doesn't happen. Delayed gratification, that is critical for success. It's also known as drive. If someone says you can't do something, persistent people it makes them work harder. I love it when somebody tells me I can't do something. I watch me, watch me. You can't do that. Watch me. You know, if it's something particularly difficult, bring it on. Specifically, the comments uh, of YouTube videos. Why? Why make a negative comment on a YouTube video? Okay, y'all. It's all good. Like, bring it. You know, if you want to have a little bit of a debate in the YouTube comment section. I'm all for it. Leave a comment. It's all good. But think about it before you do it, okay? What good is that going to do? Just to wallow in the self-pity and in the muck. What good is that doing for you, okay? It's not bothering me. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking about the YouTube comment section, okay? Generally speaking, in your life. What good is that going to do? Ask yourself that question in just about everything you do. What good is this going to do for me personally? You can think about others too, but you as, a, as an individual need to ask yourself, what good is that going to do? And discipline is actually very similar to persistence. Drive is different from discipline, but they're related. Discipline is behaving in a controlled way to make your drive more focused. So you, you're persistent, but in a, in a focused direction. That's discipline. Again, when we're talking about persistence, opportunity is plentiful. The easy gold has already been picked up. So you've, the easy tasks typically are already taken. You're going to have to work for success. That's a given. All right? You're going to have to persist persistence. Okay. A common problem that I've noticed with business owners nowadays, uh, in, in modern times, there's zero follow-up. I'm not sure if you've, you've noticed this or not, but here around here locally, and I've actually noticed it in other communities as well, but man, you have to stay on top of people to get, get things done. So you, you have to call them and, and reassure, you have to make sure that they're coming, you have to uh, confirm appointments, otherwise it gets lost. I don't know if you noticed this as well, but it's pretty common where we're at. So don't do that. Follow up on things. If you're going to open a business, follow up. Honestly, 
that's really all it comes down to. I mean, it, it really success, a successful business nowadays really would not take very much. Be persistent, follow up on phone calls, have drive and be passionate about what you're doing. The three P's. Let me be clear. Anyone can make a killing with persistence, discipline, and delayed gratification, and also taking some calculated risks along the way. Anyone can do that. You just need that initial push. The, the passion has to be there, being persistent, and having the abundance mindset and thinking that you, you can do anything. Anyone can be successful. Period. Now, out of the three P's, passion is the most important of the three, in my opinion. Passion is the driver of the other P's, baby. It, it really is amazing when you're passionate about something and you enjoy what you're doing. Time goes by very fast. It's, it makes you feel good about what you're doing, and it is absolutely critical to, to run a successful business that way. For instance, this YouTube channel, my organization that I just founded literally just a couple months ago, I am very, very passionate about helping people discover themselves, uh, having great relationships, great marriages, and being good parents and keeping families together. I'm super passionate about this, been doing this for, uh, been doing the relationship coaching gig for about five years now, and it's very validating and I love it. And I will be around for a very long time, so stick around. So if you aren't a passionate person, you're not gonna be able to persevere and you're not gonna be persistent. How can you learn how to find your passion and start making the three Ps work for you? Let's, let's get some actionable advice. It's easy to pick out the problems. Now let's talk about how you fix them. If you like my material, please subscribe, leave a comment. It's all good, negative, positive, bring it on and like the video so I can get the message out. I want to be positive in the, in this sphere. It seems like there's just way too much negativity out there anymore. I'm here to help you. That's what I'm doing here. So here's your actionable advice when it comes to the three P's. Ask yourself these questions. What's your definition of success? If money and status was out of the picture, what are you going to do with your time? What actually makes you happy? What makes you happy? I don't care who you are. There's something out there that's going to make you happy. You just got to find it. And I'm here to help you find that. Now, if you can't answer those questions, you need to work on your mindset. This channel is devoted to relationships and mindset, self-esteem, successful business, career, parenting. Stick around. A victim mindset will destroy any hope of happiness. It doesn't matter what your definition of success is at that point. If you think you're a victim, guess what? You're going to be a victim. If you think you're a winner, guess what? You might win, okay? Uh, maybe you might lose a couple games, but you'll learn from it, you'll, you'll get better at it, and eventually you will win. I promise you, that's persistence, that's perseverance. That's what this is all about. Now, individual therapy and self-improvement work can help you discover the original source. Where, where did that victim mindset come from? Honestly, scarcity mindset, victim mindset's the same thing. Abundance mindset's what you want. That's what you're looking for. That's what I want to help you with. Many times a scarcity mindset is a safety mechanism that you've developed over time to protect your sense of loss or harm. And most of the time you've picked it up or you've learned from family, friends, past flings, girlfriends, boyfriends, wherever that came from, don't carry it with you. So what's the saying? Rejection lasts a second and regret lasts a lifetime. Very true. Very, very true. Understand what mindset you currently have and how it's limited you in the past. Recognize the mistakes that you've had and correct them. Learn from them. 
That's the key to having abundance mindset. Knowing that things are going to happen, shit happens. It's okay to fail at something as long as you learn from it, adapt, and get better at it. That's the key. In your head, rethink the narrative that's, that's, that's going through your head. So you turn, I hate my job, into I'm thankful I have a job and have an opportunity to change for the better. Right? That sounds a little corny, a little bit cheesy, but hate is a strong word. I hate my job. Well, guess what? You're going to suck at your job. You're not going to have very much fun. But if you recognize some of the skill set that you have, maybe you can change into a different field. Maybe you can change your situation. It's all good. You're not set where you are. If you're not enjoying yourself, change. Change, change is inevitable. Change happens all the time. And usually change comes with a little bit of pain. That's common. And this next one is pretty critical. Surround yourself with positive people, not the negative Nancys, the Eeyores. If you're surrounding yourself with Eeyores, it rubs off and it's going to, it's going to bring you down and it's, they're going to pull you into the muck. Surround yourself with positive people that bring you up. Find a circle of coworkers, friends, family, sports, or hobbies where you can mooch some of those positive vibes. Okay, you know what I'm talking about, the positive people. Uh, if you have a negative mindset, instead of tearing someone down that's been successful, how about you walk up to them and say, hey, what do you think about this? What can I do about this? Most successful people that I know will love to talk to you about that kind of thing. Obviously, I don't mind because I'm here talking to a camera trying to help you, <laughs> okay? So successful people typically want to pass it on. My circle is full of such people. And honestly, my group that I have, the, the private Facebook group that I have, is just full of positive people that are, that are looking to lift you up. Come on in. Marriage isn't dead. Private group's the name of it. It's Facebook. It's free. Come on in. Let's do it. Find, instead of just surrounding yourself with positive people, find a mentor to model yourself after. Look at somebody that's got a successful marriage or a successful relationship. They've been successful in life. Uh, they're happy. Spend some time with that person and model, your, and model yourself after them instead of knocking them down. A lot of people have a tendency to knock down successful people. That's, be, that's usually self-esteem problems where they want to make themselves feel better about knocking the, knocking the person down that uh, has the house on the hill. I don't want you to be that person. I rambled a little bit here. Sorry about that. But in closing, the three Ps are almost universal when it comes to successful people. Stick around for more content like this, and we're going to work on this together. You and me, let's get it done. Come on to the private Facebook group. Like I said, it's free. Let's get it on. All right. Today is the best day. One of my favorite sayings when it comes to this kind of thing, when is the best time to plant a tree? Answer, 20 years ago. When's the second best time to plant a tree? Today. Let's get it done today. Subscribe. Let's get it done. So until next time, be better than you were yesterday and be desirable.